So what we've got is we've got this housing here that will attach to this reciprocal clutch on the go-kart motor and then this sprocket uh, that we're going to actually cut off because what we're gonna do is put this sprocket on there to change the gear ratio. And so they've asked me to uh, figure out a way to get this sprocket connected to this housing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the teeth off of this sprocket on the old lathe and then I'm going to create this uh, backing plate out of this steel that we'll put in here and put a whole pattern in it. That way we can mount it to this sprocket. So that's the plan. All right, let's see what happens. call it a good time this little lathe is not super rigid um, and this interrupted cut is definitely causing some chatter but as you can see the teeth are coming off I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you I just took this to the 2x72 to knock off the majority of the material because this does not like that interrupted cut Take two. We are finally getting somewhere. This is looking really good. You can see that it's, uh, almost clean all the way around. Got a big chunk of clean. So, and it's starting to feel good. And I'm just taking tool pressure cuts because uh, this thing bounces so much off that I can just keep making passes without adjusting the compound uh, or the cross slide. So, we're getting there. I think I kneeled it a little bit grinding on it, but it's starting to cut. I can see chips. So that's good. cleaned up not a gorgeous surface finish but it's okay we might hit it with a little bit of sandpaper um, the old south bend did good So what I did was I took one of these little steel discs that I ordered online and I put it on the bridge port and uh, basically found the center of it and cut a hole in it. I went through until I got a one inch end mill. So I had a one inch hole in here. That allowed me to then take it over to the lathe and then go and put a nice qualified surface on the face of it and then also machine that little shoulder on it. Now that shoulder is designed to hold the sprocket and locate the sprocket because when the sprocket goes on this, it'll be able to set on there like that and uh, locate on this bolt plate here. Then what I did was I put this back on the bridge port and then I got the boring head and I bored this out to the correct size because that needs to fit over this. So 
So this OD is a press fit to that ID, so that'll be pressed on eventually. But the step we're at right now is putting the bolt hole pattern on this. So got it up on my little indexing head and uh, these just a four bolt pattern. So that means that these are all gonna be 90 degrees out from one another. And as you can see, I'm at 270 right now. And uh, the next step after I've got these center drills to do a 732nd drill and then a 516th drill because I'm going to tap these with a 3816th bolt hole. And then I'm going to go back, throw this up on the indexing little head here and put in um, holes that are slightly larger than 3 8 uh, so that this right here will go on and locate on and thread in and do all that good stuff. But the next step after that is take this, press it onto that, and then TIG weld this onto that. Then bolt this onto this. Got all my holes drilled. They're all to 5 sixteenths. Now it's time to put a tap in. I like it getting tight at the bottom. Put Loctite in it as well, but I want it to mechanically snug up at the bottom so it didn't run the tap all the way through so it's a little bit tight. But once you put a wrench on that, it'll be good. Got the sprocket up, center drilling it. Looks 
good. Okay, so I got all of the holes drilled with up to a 5 16 And then uh, I do have a little thing that's of interest. You see that jaw, it's right below this hole, which means I couldn't go all the way through. So what I did is that hole was at 270 degrees. I went ahead and drilled it as far as I could with this drill. And then I rotated it back to zero and locked it in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this and let it rotate and then find this with this. So basically, loosen that. So now I lost my location, right? Now I'm in trouble. But I'll find it with this drill. So I'm gonna unlock my brake so that it can float a little bit. And there we go. Now this is hard because I need two hands. So I'm gonna try my best to just snug this while I got pressure on the back of this. And see if I can take this back out. Yeah. See how that goes in nice. Doesn't fight anything. Lock my brake in. And then now I'm gonna tighten this up right here. And then I'm just gonna look, make sure it's still basically flat. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna drill that hole because now I'm clear. So here we go. So I'll drill it all the way out here and then I'm gonna put the 3 8 drill bit in it here in a second. And my objective is just to get all the way through on this hole. First. That's it. Lock it in, turn it off, and then I'm going to put a 3 8 in now. Okay, so here's a tip. I try not to get too overly instructional in my videos, but what I think is worth noting is if you can see where I've got this clamped right here, it's in the collet, and that's on the flutes. So that's a no bueno, just so you, so you know, right? But the idea is you want to have just enough to where you are clamping on the drill bit where it's as short as possible. So you want as much of the shank up in the collet to shorten the drill as much as possible without chucking on the actual flutes. So you'd want it right about there. If you can see that. That's about where you want it. And then another Tip. Let me tighten this up before it drops on me. Okay, so that looks, can you see that? That looks pretty good. It's right there on the minimum. Okay, so another tip. People always have hard times with the drill bits and steel and they burn them up real quick and um, it's just a super common thing. Two things, use some sort of a cutting fluid, and then the second, and probably should be the first and most important, is start out with a good drill. And I like these, uh, these are actually Klee lines. I'll show you real quick here, these little guys. I really like them, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever you use, use something that's got some sort of a coating on it, like a titanium, uh, coating some sort of nitride black oxide something something decent if you're just using oh, like This that might not be high-speed steel This looks like just high-speed steel That thing's gonna burn up on you in a minute. All right, so um, Use something that's got a good coating on it the gold coating black oxide uh, You know titanium some sort of nitride and then third is run it slow. When you're drilling steel, speed is not necessarily um, 
you know, high speed is, is not necessarily what you're looking for. The harder the material, the slower you want to go and uh, use plenty of cutting fluid. So there's your tip. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna open this up with a 3 8 and then I'm gonna check because a lot of times a 3 8 bolt is not actually 3 8 in diameter. And so we'll throw caliper on this real quick and look at that, 0.365. So it's 10 thou smaller on the OD than what its nomenclature calls for. Which means if I drill with a 3 8, it is actually 0.375. My hole should be big enough that this bolt or a bolt of the same diameter will go through and line up perfectly. Where is it? I'm trying to make you sick. Into this part so that when it lines up on the threads, I got a little wiggle room and my bolt is actually just passing through this um, and not threading into this, not getting tight, but goes straight through, but has just a little bit of alignment room. Um, not much, but you know, 10 thou on the total diameter should be good for clearance. That would be 5 thou per side. That's plenty to hold this still in, in a good location. Because if this hole is too big, then you've got some weird things with the force as this is trying to rotate and these bolts are trying to hold it straight uh, you know, and fixed. Um, then you, you get some weird stuff. These holes will start to slop out and egg out on you. Uh, and, and it's just not a good thing. So you want it as tight as possible to re reduce any flash or you know, real slamming or movement going on when the force is applied to this sprocket to make it rotate. So anyways, a couple thoughts to think about. So I'm gonna drill this out, see if this fits through. If it does, move on to the next step. All right, got the 3 8 in there, got it running slow, a little bit of oil on it, and then we're gonna cut this thing through. Look at that, cutting like butter. So I'm gonna move off and then see if that goes through. We'll set it to our next location because we gotta cut it anyways. Sure is hard doing this one-handed. All right, grab our bolt. That's, that's perfect. It's got just enough clearance that it goes in there. Very minimal movement and uh, kind of doesn't want to come back out super easy. Which is, which is good. It's not threading in there by any means. About the perfect fit. If I would have drilled this any bigger, I think I would be in trouble. So we're gonna call that good. Drill all the rest of the holes that size, take this off and see if it does in fact mate to this. If it doesn't, we might have to make it where these holes are bigger to make it fit. But I think we're in good shape. So we're gonna drill these out, take it off, test fit it. If all that test fits perfectly, then we're gonna clean everything off really, really well, and it's time for the press fitting of this guy to this guy, and then some welding. All right. All right, got all the holes drilled, and of course I had the same problem of hitting on the chuck jaw over here, so I had to do the same little rotation trick and finish the hole here. Now I'm gonna put just a really, really gentle chamfer on this just to edge break it a little bit and uh, start trying to fit it up. All right, so for this one, instead of using the bridge port, we're gonna use this little guy. 
it's a drill press that has no table that I leave set up with a chamfer um, tool in it, a little countersink tool. So I'm just gonna hold this by hand and give it a little easy edge break. Nothing too too wild. Got a little chatter. Ain't no one ain't no one caring about that. One-handed machining. You know. Sticker for some lubrication. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. Alright, let's fly over here and let's get serious with this project. This is the moment of truth. Does this fit on this without any problems? All right, all right, all right. I like what I see so far. Looks like pretty good alignment. Let's get some bolts. One bolt. Let's head over to the bolt bin because we need to grab one more. 3816 already open. If at least two fit, we know we're good. If two don't fit, we're in prob we got problems. All right, one fits, 180 from that one. Oh my gosh, folks. Oh my gosh. I think we have magic. Da -da -da -da. And like I said, I wanted them tightening up towards the bottom which these aren't the right bolts. These are too long and maybe use some grade eights or something, but proof of concept, we are golden. Look at that. Oh yeah. Sweet. Really, really pleased. down on there really nice gives it that little shoulder just to, to locate on nothing crazy but just something to help it locate on now it's not a huge locating surface because see that chamfer on the sprocket here that reduces my surface area that's going to be in contact with this shoulder but yet it still see that it snaps into place exactly what we want I am pleased. All right, so time to clean everything up. And then we're gonna press fit this on, because that's a press fit. Look at that, how nice that goes on. Like a little magnet, just barely wants to suck on there, and then just a little bit of pressure, and she's there. So we'll press that down, then weld it. Then we'll put this on and bolt it. Okay, so we're ready to press this uh, piece onto this piece. We want it to go all the way down. So I'm just gonna start it by hand here and uh, get it on there nice and snug. Try to get it kind of straight. So that just went on a good ways and it's decently straight. Just kind of by hand. It's definitely going. Now I don't want to put pressure on it when it's bottomed out and mushroom that all out. See it's nearly flush. So I'm liking that. It's feeling good and it's a nice tight press fit, but I've got to find something that's larger than this diameter here to be able to go on that. I might have to cut off a piece of pipe, but anyhow, it's, uh, it's going. All right. So found this, I'm not sure it was in my toolbox. 
but it fits over this, so I'm gonna give it a try this morning. Saying I don't like you, stop doing this to me. It's a pretty good press fit though. I like it. Almost there. Let's see. It's pretty good. I don't want to start bending things. Looks good to me. All right, it's time to weld this thing up. So I'm just gonna set it right there for right now. We're gonna weld around that uh, connection point right there. Got my little welder going here. She's so quiet. Let's crank it up a little bit. Let's do about 80 amps. And run DC. All right, got my gas on. Okay, let's do this. Not perfect, but uh, I think it will work. My little welder, I gotta get used to. And then also, um, it'd be really nice if I had a cleaner bench and I could sit down and actually hold my hand steady and weld, but this will work. All right, let's see if the sprocket still fits on this thing. I hope I didn't get any distortion with the welding. Fits well. These aren't the actual bolts. I'm gonna let the person who commissioned this job actually go get their correct fasteners. Uh, these are three quarter inch, three eight sixteenths, half inch length would be the correct length for what we've got going on here. So, but all I'm concerned with is just the whole pattern match up. Does everything go in? And it does. And I'm just finger tightening these. Like I said, I left these where they would be um, tightening up at the bottom. And that's what we're experiencing already here. See that they're at the bottom? And so if these were half inch long, then they'd be bottoming out just in time. And uh, I think it's really gonna work out nice. Okay guys, so hopefully that was helpful or entertaining. A uh, couple of tools that were fun to use for the first time for me, uh, not in my life, but uh, that I purchased for my shop and that was including this little indexing head. Uh, this is not a, a very expensive indexing head. It's uh, you know one that I got on online. I think I maybe paid $300 for it, something like that. But it, it really worked well and man, Super accurate as far as you know what I was doing here. It, it really it really worked. So uh, and this was a fun project to be able to you know come up with a creative solution on how to retrofit a different larger gear on a centrifugal uh, clutch hub like this. So that was kind of cool. It was fun to get out of uh, you know the box a little bit and think a little bit. And then also it was it was cool to use my uh, new TIG welder. So. I used to have a Miller Sinker Wave 300, and that thing was great, uh, but I didn't use it for a long time, and then I ended up selling it, and I needed another TIG welder. And so what I ended up getting was this little Yes welder, and it's a 
250p TIG welder AC-DC and I have not welded aluminum with it yet. Um, I have no doubts that it will do well. What I've done with it with steel has been, been pretty good. I've got a new torch. I will say that the torch it comes with is eh, eh. So that I think will help me out. But man, this little thing, I think I paid $600 for it at the end of last year. They had some sales going on and, and uh, I picked one up and, and I really like it. So if you're looking for an entry level TIG welder, I really believe this is it. So anyhow, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.